Hi, everyone. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee, <clears throat> and uh, figured this morning we'd go through a few things regarding uh, some of the overnight models. I did already put up the GFS uh, video uh, early this morning when uh, I got home from WPIX TV last night, and now I'm reevaluating some of the models that we've gotten in between. Plus, I want to look at some local weather, too, for very quickly, because we have another day of of gloominess here with low clouds and you can see the spinning upper low just continues to churn away starting to inch toward the northeast which is going to be part of the process of uh, clean not only cleaning all of this out of here but uh, setting up the next uh, big high that's going to be coming down this week and also setting the table for Hurricane Matthew and the bottom of that trough is right down here and you can see those clouds moving from south to north so this is that weakness that we've been talking about with respect to Matthew. So don't expect much today, just a lot of clouds, some spotty light rain or drizzle, some patchy fog and temperatures in the 60s. And then I think we might be able to see some brightening of skies on uh, Monday or maybe even a few breaks of sun. Now we have Hurricane Matthew, which overnight has uh, started a northwest course and it is continuing on a northwest course, maybe a little bit more um, in terms of a heading uh, to me, it probably looks like at about 310 or 315, but I don't think it's any more than 315 degrees. Uh, and on that course, if it were to continue on a straight line, it would probably go to western Jamaica. But weather models are trending it over uh, time to go a little more north-northwest to take it between Jamaica and Haiti or perhaps closer to the south coast of Haiti. We'll see. But... Uh, the eye is looking a little ragged this morning. The Air Force Reconnaissance aircraft is in there right now. Still finds a Category 4 hurricane. The pressure's come up just a little bit. Um, not unusual, really. Uh, when you have an intense hurricane, it, it, it can only hold uh, that extreme intensity for so long. Now, in the range of, uh, of, of strength, uh, we have seen hurricanes get much stronger than this in the Atlantic Basin over the last uh, 15, 20 years. Uh, with a couple of other Category 5 uh, hurricanes, uh, and also by, as measured by the uh, lowest pressure. Uh, Matthew didn't quite get there. We've had the pressures on hurricanes get down to 900 millibars or even less, like in Katrina's case, which got down uh, under uh, 890 millibars. Um, now, here's the visible satellite this morning, and you see the eyes kind of filled in a little bit. So uh, we'll wait for subsequent um, reconnaissance aircraft reports to see where this is going. Okay. So, you know, we've been mentioning that the issue all along has been the fact that we're watching to see uh, whether this system that's coming into the plain states is going to be strong enough to pick this uh, hurricane up. Now, the GFS uh, last night uh, went and took it out to sea, and everything kind of matched up, and now we've been thrown another curveball because it now does do the phase, and you can watch it as it moves up the coast on, on this model. This is... Uh, Friday afternoon. It's also faster, and that's going to be another very important factor is, is that if the hurricane moves faster to get to the southeast coast, it's going to have a better chance of being caught by this next cold front and trough that's moving eastward. So now we're into Friday night. Uh, this is Saturday morning, 8 a.m., so we are well underway with regards to rain and wind, and it takes the uh, hurricane just inland just offshore and then crosses it over long island and into connecticut this is a model output this is not my forecast i cannot tell you how much i want to emphasize this i have said it over and over again and then i see people saying that i'm i'm calling for this to happen or that to happen please read my posts thoroughly please pay attention to what i am saying this is a model output because I'm going to show you the European model, which is completely different because it is much slower with Matthew. They, uh, and I, uh, here's the difference. This is Friday evening, okay, on the European, which has the hurricane east of the Florida coast and south of Charleston. This is the GFS model, which has the hurricane sitting on the outer banks of North Carolina. So you've got two different solutions here. And what the European did last night was that it take, took it much further west toward the North Carolina coast. But this trough is much weaker on this model. It never picks it up. And in fact, it lifts out and actually stalls Matthew off the outer banks of North Carolina 
for about two days, and then it kicks it out to the northeast as another trough is swinging down uh, from uh, Canada into the Great Lakes. This is a totally different solution. So you cannot go by what one particular model says, particularly because uh, they are looking at two, the same situation and coming up with two different outcomes. Here's the upper air to give you uh, the, the view from what's happening aloft. In fact, you know what? I'm going to widen this, this out. And we'll be able to see it um, better here. So here's that trough that comes into the Midwest. The European lifts it so far to the west, it never really, you can barely find it here. It's right there, but you can barely find it. And it, it misses it, and it just leaves it down there off North Carolina. And then finally, this next trough comes and picks it up and kicks it out to sea. That's 10 days from now, okay, next Wednesday. Uh, that, that's how different this model uh, is. The GFS has uh, a, a completely different look, as we said. And here's the upper air for the GFS. There comes Matthew through the Bahamas. Here comes the trough out to the west. The trough sharpens, picks it up phases it and brings it right up into New England, up into uh, northern, northwestern New England. I honestly, you know, I can look at both bottle runs and say that both of them in their own way make some sense. I think the keys going forward will be we're going to watch uh, Hurricane Matthew in terms of this northwestward motion. How fast does it get into the Bahamas and um, what kind of strength is it going to have when it gets there. Those are, those are the three important factors. And then the other important factor is, of course, this trough in the West. Is the GFS correct in showing something uh, of depth that has the strength to pick Matthew up and bring it up the East Coast? Or is it going to be like the European, which has a much weaker, um, much flatter look uh, with that system uh, where it completely bypasses Matthew and leaves it down off the Carolinas and I'm going to tell you there's probably other combinations of outcomes that we're not even taking into account. So uh, we will take us through our Sunday. Take some time to watch some football today. You know, it's football Sunday. Uh, I will be working at WPIX TV tonight. You can catch me all next week on Fios One News, Long Island, Fios One News, New Jersey, Fios One News, Hudson Valley. WPIX TV, by the way, is in New York City. Um, and Fios One News covers the Hudson Valley in New York, Long Island in New York, and um, the state of New Jersey. And, uh, of course, uh, you can check out a meteorologist, joechoppy.com, weatherlongisland.com, uh, nycweathernow.com, and also uh, ssstormchasers.com, because if this thing does come up the East Coast, you can believe that SS Storm Chasers, uh, the crew from, uh, from SS Storm Chasers, will be chasing this storm. Have a great Sunday.